Hull brought in steady income in the Premier League and in general across the decade, being in the black for seven of these ten years. We don't often see this many years above the line, and on average, Hull seems to be a shining example of improving profitability as a result of league performance. So is this really the case? Wow, 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 you're never going to see anything like it again. Wait till you see this. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we set off for Yorkshire to unravel the financial story of Hull City. Flashback to 2013 and we find the Tigers not just fighting for Premier League survival, but reaching the final of the FA Cup, losing narrowly to Arsenal. However, Hull would suffer relegation the following season, kicking off a yo-yo period for the next three years. 2018 onwards, City's trajectory lowered, culminating in relegation to League One in 2020. Hull would bounce straight back and under the new ownership of Akka Nilakali, finish this decade back in the Championship. Behind the scenes, the MKM Stadium witnessed a managerial merry-go-round with nine different leaders taking charge from the dugout. Bruce, Phelan, Silva, Slutsky, Adkins, McCann, Arvaladze, Dawson, Rossinia. Now let's turn our focus off the pitch, what unfolded behind the scenes. Hull's revenue shoots up in those earlier Premier League years. Following relegation, income tapers off as parachute payments peter out, with League One being their worst year. From a high of £117 million back in 2017, Hull have now generated almost £100 million less in 2023. What drove these shifts? Let's break it down by revenue source. First off, let's tackle match day revenues. These also peaked in 2017 at £16 million in their final Premier League season. In the last year, these have dropped to just 6 million, but now account for a third of all revenues. Next, let's dive into TV and league distributions. Unsurprisingly, 2017 is again the summit at 94 million pounds. With parachute payments firmly in the past, these have now settled to around 8 million in recent years. Finally, commercial revenues. We have to look back to the 2015 Premier League year for Hull's best season, bringing in 7 million. In 2023, this is now under 3. Analyzing by league position shows as well as a clear distinction between the Premier League and the Championship, the clear divide between the parachute years and those without. On average, Hull's Championship years delivered 32.5 million, just 34% of what they made in the Prem. Strange, annoying, disappointing. I think it was all the emotions. Now let's dive into profits. Hull brought in steady income in the Premier League and in general across the decade being in the black for seven of these ten years. We don't often see this many years above the line, and on average, Hull seems to be a shining example of improving profitability as a result of league performance. So is this really the case? Wow, 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 you're never going to see anything like it again. Wait till you see this. We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button, and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. This with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Hull appeared to keep control of the wage bill during those Premier League years, with wages well within revenue. Proportionally, this has shifted since Hull faced relegation to League One, with wages passing revenues in all but one season since 2020. And how did these wage bills convert to points on the pitch? In the Premier League spell, the best return for points came in 2014 at 1.2 million. In the two relegation seasons, these crept closer to two. Outside the top flight, points on average have cost 400k. So after accounting for just staff costs, there would appear to be a tale of two halves going on. Next up, operating costs. We see a sharp drop in these in 2015, and also 11 million of income in 2022. Let's look into these. First, in 2014, Hull had written off six million pound of costs from another company within the Alum House Group. However, the following year, Alum House guaranteed these amounts due, so the write-off was reversed. In 2022, we see previous owners Alum House forgiving 20 million of loans. So at an EBITDA level, we still see more years above the line. Third, stadium and facilities, expenses related to long-term assets such as the stadium and training facilities. These aren't significant in the profit picture, so let's take these away and move on to the final one, transfer fees. 
There's a clear distinction between the Premier League yo-yo spell and subsequent years. There were net transfer costs until 2018, but since, City have made net income in all years but one. Healthy profits were made in 2018, 20 and 23, driven by the sales of Harry Maguire, Jared Bowen and Keen Lewis Potter. So we can see these transfer deals have bolstered profits in these later years outside the Premier League, but to what cost to performances on the pitch? Margins have remained healthy, with the exception of that League One year. How are you feeling today? Yeah, really excited. So let's analyse if the cash aligns with the profit narrative we've just explored. As usual, we're scrutinising the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, matches the PL story. We see strong inflows in all Premier League years, but since 2019, cash has flown out of the MKM. Over 10 years, the club has seen just 2 million leave the club but the trend of the last three years may be a cause for concern. Now, let's shift our attention back to transfers. It's a different story here. Since the Premier League spell in 2015, Hull have consistently brought transfer cash in. In fact, across the decade, they have generated £6 million. Add these together, and it looks clear that Hull have adjusted themselves operationally to life outside the Premier League. Across these 10 years, the club has in fact made £4 million. Though again, the trend since 2021 is one to keep an eye on. So has cash been injected into the club? Well, money came in during the yo-yo spell, but cash was taken out of the club to reduce its debt load ahead of the sale to Akin Media. Post-sale 2023 saw a further 10 million put into the club. Will this change of ownership see a return to the top table for Hull City? Only time will tell. Until next time.